Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. <clears throat> Father, how our hearts rejoice this morning as we sing the baptism. Father, those that you have saved and cleansed, Father, and have washed by your precious blood. And Father, we come this morning, Lord, we thank you for the privilege that, Lord, we can be forgiven. And God, we can be washed from our sins in your own blood. And Father, we as sinful men, sinful women, boys and girls, lost and doomed, that Father, we can stand before you pure, and we can stand before you righteous and holy. And Father, we can be kings and priests in a holy nation unto you, O oh God, Lord. It's far beyond what we can understand. But God, we look to you this morning and we praise you and we thank you and we glorify you for such a salvation so wonderful and so powerful. Father, this morning as we come, I pray that we'd worship you. And Father, we'd adore you and we'd give you thanks. Father, I pray for the leaders of this church, the pastor and the deacons. I pray for our Sunday school teachers, Lord, the choir director and those that sing. Father, help us to unite together in one accord, Lord, to seek your honor and glory, Lord, to evangelize this world and to teach, Lord, our children. Father, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Page 166, I'll meet you in the morning. Let's we'll sing the first and the third before the choir comes to sing. Page 166. should point to his crucifixion, should point to his resurrection. I want y'all to listen to this. 
It says, on a hill called Calvary, there stands an endless mercy tree. And when I think about mercy, it's us not getting what we deserve. And we didn't get what we deserve because of that cross. And it says, every broken, weary soul will find your rest and be made whole. These guys that got baptized today, but they were broken and weary souls. And God made them whole. We saw their profession of faith through baptism. And if you were saved today, you were broken, you were weary. But now he has made you whole. It's the stripes of blood that stained its frame, shed to wash away our shame. From the scars, pure love released, salvation by the mercy tree. It says, in the sky between two thieves hung the blameless Prince of Peace. Bruised and battered, scarred and scorned, sacred hand pierced by our thorns. It says, it is finished was his cry. The perfect lamb was crucified. His sacrifice was our victory. Our Savior chose the mercy tree. It says, hope went dark that violent day. The whole earth quaked at love's display. Three days silent in the ground, his body born for heaven's crown. It says, but on that bright and glorious day, when heaven opened up the grave, he's alive and he's risen indeed. Oh, praise him for that mercy tree. It says, death has died and love is won. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus Christ has overcome. He's risen from the dead. In the last verse of this song, it says, very soon we'll see his face and every tear he'll wipe away. <coughs> There's no more pain or suffering. Oh, praise him for the mercy tree. And if you can get a hold of this choir, if you can get a hold of it, of what we are singing about, yes. the fact that we are singing about our Savior hey. and what he did on the cross for every single one of us. And if this was not for anybody else, it was for me today. Because I have worshipped yesterday, listen to this, this morning, the same thing. I had to do my makeup again because I started crying. They all just think about what we're seeing. <laughs> On a hill called Calvary, there stands an endless mercy tree. Every broken, weary soul Find your rest and be made whole Stripes of blood that stain its frame Shed to wash away our shame From the scars, pure love released Salvation by the mercy tree.
Amen. Aren't you thankful for that mercy tree? Amen. Boy, Paul said, The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us that are saved, it's the power of God. Amen. I'm thankful for the cross. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer that if we ever, if you'll get in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you'll do a study on the crucifixion, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You'd no longer be neutral. You'd have to just fall on your knees if you really got a true glimpse and a true taste of what took place at Calvary. Not because of His sin, but because of our sin. The Bible said, He that knew no sin was made sin for us. He was made our sin offering. He took our place. He died a death that you and I deserved. And I'm glad I'm saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah. He is risen. I'm glad that it didn't stop with the cross. He paid the price. He died. But the Bible teaches us and tells us that thanks be unto God, three days He rose again. And He's alive forevermore. He'll never, ever suffer and bleed, and die again. He did it once, and He did it for all. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy, uh, chapter number 2. Second Timothy, chapter number 2. And I'd like to read you just a few verses uh, from here. God has laid this on our heart, and we want to share with you uh, what He's given us for this service this morning. In 2 Timothy chapter number 2, and I'm going to begin reading with verse number 14. If you're able to do so, would you stand for the reading of God's Word today? I want to read verses 14 through 19. The Bible reads like this. It says, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but the, to the subverting of the hearers. Study 
to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as does, doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I want us to notice especially verse number 19. The Bible said there, it said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth, no, think about this, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In 2 Timothy chapter number 2, there's four things that just really stand out. It's some facts. It's some warnings. It's some instructions. And some assurance that just stand out in this chapter. That's what I want us to look at uh, this morning just for the next few minutes. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before You. Thank You, Lord, for the day. Thank You, God, so much for how that You've blessed us here in Your house today. God, we thank You for Your presence, Lord, that we feel here in this place. And God, I just pray now that as we look into Your Word, that You'll speak to all of our hearts. Help us to receive from Your Word that that we stand in need of. God, I pray for those in this building that don't know You as their personal Lord and Savior. God, I pray You'll speak to their heart Draw them to you that they can be saved by your grace. God, we pray for those that may be discouraged. God, those that may be going through some trials. God, those that may be going through some difficult times. And God, you know everything about us all. You know everything. You know the very intent of our heart. You told us even the very hair on our head is numbered. And God, we just thank you for that today. And I pray that you'll meet every need in this building. There's not one single need you can't meet. Lord, I pray that you'll meet every need in this building, Lord, as we bring them to you in Jesus' name. And for His sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. If you go back to chapter number 1 for just a moment, we find that 2 Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul uh, to Timothy. It said there in verse number 1 and 2, it said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. He said to Timothy, My dearly beloved Son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Jesus Christ our Lord. We find also that this is the last epistle that Paul would write prior to his death. It's very likely this is the last epistle that, that he penned down before his death. If you look over in chapter number 4 of 2 Timothy, the Bible said in verses 6 through 8, Paul says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. But he says, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. If you'll study 2 Timothy, you'll find that the theme of 2 Timothy is how a servant of God is to conduct himself in the midst of apostasy. Apostasy is a falling away. 
And certainly Paul experienced that. Uh, it was taking place in his day. It's even more evident in the day and age in which you and I are living uh, today. And so he, he, he gave some instructions on how a servant of Jesus should live amidst apostasy and also amidst false teaching or false doctrine uh, that was going out. If you also read in chapter number 1, you'll find that Paul had a great desire to see Timothy before Paul passed. He wanted to see him. He wanted to talk with him. He wanted to see him uh, face to face. We see in verse number 7 of chapter number 1 and verse number 9 that, that Paul reminded Timothy of some things. He said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And he also reminded him that God had saved us and called us with a holy calling. He says, Not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. If you'll study out 2 Timothy, I mentioned apostasy. And if you'll look in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, uh, you'll find in verses 3 and 4, where Paul said this, he says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Don't you see that in Paul's day? But don't you see that even more prevalent in the day and hour in which you and I live? You can go to a lot of places today that's got church up over their door. You can hear a fairy tale. You can hear a bunch of jokes. You can hear a story that's told. But in many of them, the Word of God is never open. The Word of God is never preached. They never talk about a place that's called hell. They never talk about the chastening hand of God. They never talk about how that God will judge sin. They'll never talk about those things. Teachers having itching ears. And it said they'll be turned from, from the truth. And they'll be turned unto fables. Now the Bible teaches us, if you go with me and turn with me back just a few pages, and you'll look with me in 2 Thessalonians. I want you to listen to what he says uh, concerning apostasy. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, the Bible reads like this. He says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Listen to this. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is God, or that is worshipped, so that He is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing Himself that He is God. This is in reference to the Antichrist that would come. And so Paul was warning and warned Timothy concerning apostasy, the falling away, those that would turn away from the truth. But he also gave him some warning concerning false teachers. If you'll look in chapter 2, and look at verse number 17 and 18. He says, And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, 
who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and the result, Paul says, and overthrow the faith of some. So we warn him uh, concerning false teaching. If you go over into 2 Peter, or go, go with me if you will, first of all, let's go to 2 Peter, and I want you to listen to what the Scripture says concerning false teachers. In 2 Peter chapter uh, number 2, he said in verses 1 through 3, he says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And he said, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. And so there's ample warnings given concerning apostasy and concerning false teachers. Now go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm going to give you this very quickly. I mentioned earlier that there's fact. The fact is, and we know we're living in the last days. The fact is, we're living in a day of apostasy, the falling away. People turning from the truth of the Word of God and turning unto fables. That's a fact. There is a fact that there's false teachers. There's false teachers all throughout this land. It doesn't take a genius just to... You can turn the TV on, you can turn the radio on, and you can listen for a little while. You can see it. And I've been, I've been in places, I've gone, I've gone to funerals, and I've heard individuals get up in a funeral that I know is a false teacher because of the doctrine that was coming out of their mouth, even at that funeral. I've sat there and I've listened. You can turn the TV on and it doesn't take you a long to, uh, to see. If it doesn't line up with what God's Word says, cut it off. If it doesn't line up with what the Word of God says, uh, close the book. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, uh, get up and walk out. If it does not line up with God's Word, have nothing to do with it. Apostasy. False teachers. False doctrine. But in the midst of all of that, You know, Timothy was experiencing this. Paul had experienced it. And Timothy was experiencing it. But you know what? In the middle of it all, he gives him some words that will help him. You and I are in this world. And the Bible says that you and I are to be the light of of this world. We're to let our light, the Bible said that you and I as believers, we're to let our light so shine before men that they see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We're to let our light shine. But listen, listen to the words that that he gave uh, to Timothy. Look at verse 1 of chapter 2. He says, Thou therefore, my son, because of all of this, he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You know something Paul had experienced in his life? He could talk about this from experience. He had experienced that the grace of God was sufficient for all of his needs. And you and I as a child of God, that same grace is sufficient for all of our needs, every single need that we have. And he told Timothy, he said, Be strong. Be strong in grace. Look in verse number 2. He tells him that the things that you've heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now you think about this. He told him, said, you you teach and you instruct and you pass it on uh, to these faithful men that they can pass it on to somebody else. Solid, sound doctrine. 
Teach it. Preach it. Pass it on. Instruct others with that. He was giving him these words. In verse number 3, he says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. You know, I've never seen, never seen anywhere where the Christian life's easy and it's simple. But he says, you endure that. You endure hardness as a good soldier. A good soldier of Jesus Christ. Another thing he tells him, notice in verse number 4. He says, no man that warreth, and we are in a war. We're in a battle. We're in a conflict as a child of God. Every day that we live in this life, we're in a battle, in a conflict. But he says this, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Don't get trapped. Don't get wound up. Don't get tangled up in the things of this life. He says that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Our number one priority ought to be pleasing God. Above anything else, it ought to be pleasing God. God. All right, let's skip down to verse 15. Notice the very first word in verse 15. It says, study. Study. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. Be earnest. Be dedicated. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Think about this. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Meeting God's approval. Meeting God's approval. Meeting God's approval. You know, a lot of times we've got it out of kilter. We want to please man. We want to please men, but we're to please God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Think about this, needeth not to be ashamed. That tells me that the work is done properly. When I was growing up, I didn't ever have time to get in trouble. Daddy had something for me to do. When I got home, there was something for me to do. When I come home from school, my number one thing, I had to get my homework. And then I had stuff to do. And I knew I better get it done. But you know when the happiest days was? The happiest days was for me is when I did what Daddy had told me to do, and I did it right. Because I'm going to tell you what, he'd do the inspection. And if it wasn't done right, you got to start over and do it again. Study. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And it says, and rightly dividing the word of truth. What you hold in your lap this morning is the word of God. It's from cover to cover. It is God's word. It's God's instruction book. Now I'm going to tell you what I can take. You can take a, a verse from over here. And you can take a verse from over here. And you can take a verse from over here and you can make it mean whatever you want it to mean. He says, rightly divide the word of truth. God's word says what it says. It's forever settled in heaven. His word says what it says. It means what it says. Leave God's words in its context and take what God's word says. He says, study to show Thyself approved unto God, a workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Notice something else he said in verse 16. He says, but shun, but shun profane. The word profane means irreverent. He says, shun profane and vain. That's empty. Babblings. <laughs> Think about this. Babblings. Fruitless. Foolishness, meaningless. He said, shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more godliness. 
It's going to get worse. Shun those things. Shun those things. Verse 17 says, Their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. We don't know a lot about them. If you go back, I think in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, Hymenius is mentioned there. And Paul said he'd turn him over to Satan. We don't know a lot about them, but we do know this. False teaching. Because the very next verse says this. says, Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul said this, Now if Christ be preached that He rose from the dead, how say some among you that there's no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we're found false witnesses of God, because we've testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. And if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. See how important the resurrection is? False teaching. False doctrine. It says it eats as a canker. Spreads quickly. Spreads quickly. But now verse 19. And I like this verse. I told you it was some fact. There's fact of apostasy. There's fact of false teaching, false doctrine. There's fact. There's some instructions. He told him to be strong in the grace of the Lord Jesus. He told him uh, that you would, he would commit those things that he had learned and teach them to others that they could teach, uh, teach others also. He told him to endure hardness. He told him not to be entangled with the affairs of this life. He told him all of these things are going to be happening. But in verse number 19, he gives him some assurance. Notice this. He says, nevertheless, in spite of all of this, he says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Aren't you glad of that this morning? The foundation, regardless of anything else, the foundation of God standeth sure. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. He is the foundation. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked the disciples, said, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Well, some of them say uh, that you're John the Baptist. Some of them say you're Jeremiah. Some of them say that you're one of the prophets. And Jesus asked them, said, But who do you say that I am? And Peter, in all of his boldness, he said, Thou art the Christ, which means the Anointed One. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, Thou art Peter. And the name Peter means a little stone. He said, Thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Was he building it on Peter? No. I'm going to tell you what, any church that's built on man will not stand. The rock is Christ. The rock is Christ. Peter had expressed faith in Jesus Christ as being the anointed one, the Son of God. And he said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you'll turn over to 1 Peter I want you to listen to what Peter pinned down here. I want you to listen to this very closely. In 1 Peter chapter number 2, notice beginning of verse 1. He says, Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. If so be you've tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming 
as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore is also contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the, stone, of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they're appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Peter said Jesus is that stone. He is that rock. He's the one that the builders said they didn't want nothing to do with. But He's the head of the corner. He's that cornerstone. He's the foundation. And Paul told Timothy, he said, the foundation of God standeth. I Don't you like that word, standeth? That tells me that it has already been standing. It has already stood. And it's presently today standing. And it forevermore will stand. What have you ever seen that has always been and always will be? It's that rock which is Christ. The foundation. That sure foundation. It says it standeth. Notice this. And it says it standeth sure. It standeth sure. That means it's firmly, firmly, firmly established. The foundation of God standeth sure. It says, having this seal, or having this inscription, and I like this part of it. It says, the Lord knoweth them that are His. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Back in the Gospel of John chapter 10, Jesus says this, and I love, love this chapter. But it says this. He says, I am the good shepherd, and knoweth my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. He says, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. In verse 25, He said, I told you, and you believe me not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. You believe not, because you're not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and he says, and I know them, and they follow me. And he says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He knows those that are His. In Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and He knoweth them that trust in Him. I'm going to tell you what. You're a child of God. I'm going to tell you what. God knows you. He knows you. He knows you. <laughs> he knows you. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. And then He gives us something else. He says, And let every one that nameth the name of Christ, He says, depart from iniquity. Separation. Depart from iniquity. In other words, live right. Live according to the Word of God. 
It's not a popular thing today. People today want to live just as close to the devil as they can and still be saved. Huh? People want to live just as close to the devil as they can and the world and the things of the world and still be saved. Paul said, let every individual, let everyone that, the na- that nameth the name of Christ depart. That means to flee from, to turn away from. He says, depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. Heard a man make a statement one time. He said, if you lay down with the dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. If you lay down with the dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. Listen. In chapter 2, verse number 4, he says, don't get tangled up. In verse number 16, he says, Shun profane and vain babblings. He tells in verse number 19, he said, Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you go down in verse 21, he said, If a man purge himself from these, clean himself up from these. In verse number 22, he says, Flee youthful Lust. In verse number 23, he says, Foolish and unlearned questions, avoid. And so he gave some facts. Gave some facts in chapter number 2 of apostasy and false doctrine. Gave those facts. He gave some instructions to Timothy. And he said, you teach others. What you've got, you teach it to somebody else. That they can be faithful and they'll teach it to somebody else. Because there's false doctrine, there's false teaching that's everywhere. Apostasy, there's people that once stood for God, they no longer stand for Him anymore. You know somebody? Everybody in this building, I guarantee you, we know somebody that once stood for God and they don't anymore. Falling away. Falling away. So he gave some fact. He gave some instruction. But thanks be unto God, he gave some assurance too. He said, the foundation of God standeth sure. And I'm glad that that foundation, there's nothing wrong with the foundation. I've done building all my life. The most important part of a building is the foundation. If you don't get the foundation right, I'm going to tell you what, the whole building, it ain't going to be right. But he said, the foundation of God standeth sure. It's, it has stood in the past. It's still standing today. And if time lasts 10 million years, it'll still be standing. It standeth sure. And another thing he said this, said, the Lord knows that you're His. The Lord knows that you're His. If you're a child of God, the Lord knows it. He knows it. The world may not care. The world don't get excited about it. And I'm going to tell you what, if you're a child of God, the Lord knows it. And He knows you. Isn't that great? He knows our needs. He knows our desires. He knows our wants. He knows it. He knows it. But He also gave this. He said, let everybody that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And this is so, so important. Because I'm going to tell you what, there's people that we meet and there's people that we make contact with when we leave this building. They know you came to church today. They know you went to the house of God today. But how do we live when we get outside these walls? You know, I can look around this building, I can't tell you who's saved in here or not. Huh? I can look around this building and I say, boy, y'all all look great. Everybody looks good. But you know what? God sees on the inside. He knows those that are His. He knows. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this. 
I believe we know too. I believe we know. But he says, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You know, is there something that God has showed you this morning? Something God showed us in our lives that needs to be fixed? That we need to get away from? You know, it's easy to come in here and sing, oh, how I love Jesus. But boy, when we walk outside those doors, different story. It's different. It's different. We ought to be the same when we walk out those doors and live the same life outside these doors that we do right in here. Ought to. I don't know your heart this morning, but I do know this. There's some facts of apostasy. There's some facts of false teaching. There's also some instructions. If we've got the goods, we're to teach others. We're to train them that they can teach somebody else. And we need to know and have the assurance that the foundation of God is standing and it'll continue to stand. And boy, we need to get rid of some things. We need to flee. We need to shun. We need to avoid. We need to depart from evil. Everyone that names the name of Christ. I don't know how God has spoken in your heart this morning. Let's stand our feet. Bobby, if y'all will come today. Come to the instruments. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved by God's grace. And God is speaking to your heart this morning. Won't you come and be saved? Call on Him. Allow Him to save you. Make a new creature out of you. Maybe you're here, you're a teacher. Maybe you're a preacher. Maybe you're a deacon. And boy, I tell you what, God wants you to take what you have. He wants you to take what you have. Teach others, train others, that they can pass it on to somebody else. He wants you to use that. He wants you to be used. You know, a lot of time we'll have a title or we'll have a name. And that's as far as it goes. Chunk the titles, chunk the names. Get rid of it. Be used of God. Be a usable vessel. Go on down in that chapter. It talks about there's in a big house, in a great house, there's vessels of honor and there's vessels of dishonor. Great house. I believe deep down in our hearts we want to be a vessel of honor for Him. Maybe your faith's been shaken recently. Know this, the foundation of God standeth sure. And God knows that you're one of His children. He knows it. Ever how God has spoken to your heart, come. Do business with Him. You don't have to tell me a thing. But you do business with God as you kneel in this altar this morning as we sing together. Page 515. 515. Nothing but the blood.
46, I must tell Jesus. Thank you. 